Today at ShopDap.com, we're going to be talking about trailer hitches for Torex. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about trailer hitches for Torex. Now, this one was provided by a company, a VW and Audi recycler. Uh, they specialize in Volkswagen Audi. I think they do BMW as well. Uh, we worked with them on this because uh, first I wanted to do some more options. This Torag that we have as a project, I want to try to offer uh, alternatives as far as cheaper alternatives for doing stuff, which is why we did our peeling switch video uh, and the other ones that we've done around that vehicle just to show you less expensive options than OEM. Now this is an OEM hitch. Obviously it is used as you can tell by the rust, specifically right in this general vicinity right here. OEM hitches are not available for Torag 1 and 2 models anymore. This is something that's discontinued. You couldn't buy a new one if you wanted to, but if you could, the price differences would be very widely varying between something like this and then the alternatives. Now, the Torag hitch from the factory was around $1,100 retail. I think it was like $1,087 retail for a Torag hitch. That would be a kit that you would get with all the parts you need for doing that retrofit. Now, because it's not available anymore, it's almost irrelevant, but if you could get it, you probably wouldn't want to for a Torag 1, maybe a Torag 2, you might consider it. So we are going with a used one. So this is one that we got from Wolf. Uh, Wolf charges, I believe, 350 or so for their trailer hitches or for this particular hitch. And they're probably gonna vary depending on the model and potentially the condition. Uh, this one's in fine condition, surface rust and stuff like that. But if we really wanted to make it nice, I would clean it up, wire brush all this stuff down and then paint all this stuff to make it look nice. We probably will do that once we've installed it, paint the aesthetic parts of it. Now, another option for you buying a hitch would be to go to a salvage yard. Now, to me, that's not something that I was ever going to do because you'd have to go to salvage yards, find a Torag, hope that Torag has a hitch. A lot of salvage yards have alerts and stuff like that that tell you stuff about the vehicle. It's not going to necessarily tell you if it has a hitch. If there are pictures, you may be able to identify one, but then the biggest issue is going to be the next one that I'm about to talk about and that's going to be towing capacity. Now, the towing capacity of Torag models, Torag 1, 2, and 3 are all 7,700 pounds. Now, with that towing weight, that is with a factory tow hitch. Now, the alternatives that exist currently that I've seen out there when looking on the market for a Torag tow hitch is the most popular one is by far the Kurt hitch. Now, the Kurt hitch is much more affordable than any of the factory options out there. The issue with that hitch is that it has a towing capacity of 6,000 pounds. Now, for our application, we are towing a 24-foot uh, enclosed trailer uh, when we do need our vehicle, which if we do want to put a car in that trailer, which we don't always, but we want the option to do that, it starts to get upwards of the top end of what Torags can tow. Now, that's okay to tow with, but when you have a Kurt hitch, it can't get to that range. So we need to be able to have a hitch that will tow to the factory towing capacity, which means we need a factory one. Now there may be other hitches out there. I did not see any, I didn't work crazy hard to find one, but I didn't see any options. Most of the ones out there I saw had a 6,000 pound capacity. So the price range you're talking about paying would be if you were to be buying one new would be 1100 bucks. Uh, and again, the Torag 3 still has that stuff available. So we will link to the Torag 3 hitch stuff in the description where you can check that out. And then also the factory ball stuff uh, will be available there as well, which works for this, but uh, that would be one of the only things that we would have available for a Torag 1 or 2 model around hitches. Now, our hitch did come with this connector smashed to pieces. Uh, I am going to, the way that you would deal with ordering a new one, these terminals can be swapped into another connector. You just need a terminal tool to deepen the ones that aren't smashed to pieces. It doesn't look like the, the terminals themselves were damaged, so that's fine. Uh, but on the back side of this connector over here is a part number, and I, we can pull up that part number on our site. Just enter any, any VW and Audi part number can be searched in our site. You pull up the connector, you'd order a new one, which is what we will do uh, before we worry about plugging this in. Now, here's the hardware that was included with our hitch from the guys at Wolf. Uh, I'm not going to be reusing it. As per VW, they recommend not reusing these bumper bolts. So we will be uh, doing this new hardware kit, which we will link to as well. If you were doing one of these hitches, you would probably want to install new hardware, especially being that we're approaching the towing capacity of this thing. We definitely want to make sure we install the new stuff. Okay, so we're going to be installing our hitch on our vehicle. Now, Kurt actually did a pretty good video on there, which might make you ask, Paul, why are you installing the hitch and showing out a video if they've already done one? And the reason why is because I'm stupid. Now we're gonna start by popping this trim cover off this 
tail light cover, and that's pretty easy. We got a pick here. Uh, if you don't have picks or a small screwdriver, uh, we will link to them in the description where you can check that out. We're gonna start by taking these screws out, T25 Torx, and drop the screw on the ground. Now, once you have the screws out, what you wanna do is kinda wiggle the tail light, and you're gonna pop it out. Now, what you can also use, sometimes it's helpful, is this bone tool, or that's what we would call it, and it's a trim tool. So you have to be careful, but it does allow you to pry. It is a plastic trim tool that allows you to pry on things without having sharp edges around things like paint and trim. And then you can pop this out. And then just pull this forward. All you're gonna do is take this connector and push back on this tab, back this direction. You can push forward on the connector and then slide it backwards. There's gonna be some dirt and stuff in here, so it might not slide off super easy. You gotta give it a little bit of a wiggle. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna take these T27 bolts from the bumper cover here on the top under the tail light uh, on this side and we'll do the same on the other side. Now we have four screws underneath that we're gonna to get to and we're gonna unlock this flap in the center. So there's one, two, three, four that we're gonna to get to, so let's get underneath. All right, we're gonna start by unlocking these. Now we're gonna take off the screws on the side. All right, now we're gonna remove T27. There's one there. One here. Now the reason why you're removing this is it locks into this bumper here. This probably would come off and stay there uh, if you take the, when you take the bumper off, but you gotta remove this anyway for the hitch. Take off these last two, and then we're gonna go to our fender liner. All right, so now we're gonna take off the five torque screws that run in here. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Last one being right up here at this seam of the bumper cover. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to see much, but this is the top upper torque screw we're gonna be getting, and then we're gonna go down and remove each one of the lower ones. Now we're gonna do the same thing, loosen the same screws along the fender liner on the opposite side. Okay, so now we're gonna start by removing this, the bumper cover, and all it does is slide off here at these edges when you have those screws out, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now we're gonna slide this off, and like so. Now we're gonna be removing our bumper bar. Now it's only mounted in two places, four bolts on this side, four bolts on the other side. So we're gonna get our 21 millimeter and take these bolts out. Now I threaded this top one back in and we're gonna go to the other side and loosen those so the bumper bar doesn't fall on us. And we take the other one off. Now I got all those off and ours is kind of stuck on but yours might fall off on you so be careful when you take those out. Okay, so we are looking at the back of our hitch here and it has these guys stuck to them. Now our bolt kit came with them so we're just gonna replace them. You could just reuse them. I assume they're probably gonna be kind of messed up from being used and so we can just peel and stick. We are gonna get this mounted up. This is something that's kind of a two-man job just because of how heavy this is and the fact you need to thread this in. So I got Nathan on the other side here and we're gonna get this thing Lift it up and and then get our bolt threaded in. Now once your bolt is threaded in there pretty good, you should be okay to let it hang. All right, now we have this thing snugged down. We haven't torqued anything yet, but we are gonna run our wire. So uh, we're gonna take that off. We're gonna pull this grommet out right here. And then we're gonna take our cable and run this up. If you go to your inside of your trunk here, you should find where that is. So I, I can just pull, there's a foam piece there that's sitting in the way. I can just pull up and out of the way. And then I should be able to get my fingers down there and we can see them come through. So we're gonna run our wires in. So you just gotta bend the wires 90 degrees there to get that out. The good news is our other connector is smashed to pieces, so it's not gonna be hard to get through. And we're gonna run that all the way up. Make sure we pull our extra slack, like so. And then put our grommet in so we make sure we get a good seal here. Okay, so with this wire, you're gonna wanna make sure you attach it so it's not flopping around. And it has a grommet on this OEM one that attaches there. And then we can throw this guy on, like so. And you may want to zip tie some of this other stuff around 
and then get all your other wiring tucked up in here. So now we're gonna torque these bolts. Now, I got conflicting information on the information I was looking at, but the bolts that came uh, with, that we purchased for the installation kit for this came with instructions that show this as 100 newton meters plus a 90 degree turn. So there's also a tightening order that shows you to tighten from the top left across and then starting at the bottom left and then across. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in that order and tightening. So what I'm gonna do is all the 100 newton meters across and then all the 90s. Okay, so now we did all of our 100 newton meters. We'll do the same exact process with our 90s. Uh, and then we're all set. So if we look here, this is where we ran our wiring to. You can see this green connector that smashed to pieces we have to replace would plug in right here. And then this other black one would run to the control module. So uh, we don't have a module yet for this vehicle, but and obviously we can't plug this in because it's smashed to pieces. But this would plug in here. We are gonna get a new connector for this and then uh, get this all installed and do our test of our lighting of, of our trailer. So we reinstalled our Toreg bumper. We also did paint our hitch on the vehicle because the original one was a little bit rusted and, and beat up. So we wanted to make it look a little more presentable. This thing isn't perfect, but again, this is our tow vehicle. We just didn't want it to look terrible. So we've installed that. We also have our wiring replaced and the connector so we can do some testing for our trailer lights. So we attempted to turn our lighting on using the factory harness that was supplied with the part from Wolf. Uh, it did not work. So it does appear as though you need to have the tow control module and probably need to do the coating to engage that. There are aftermarket harnesses out there in the world. They're going to be significantly cheaper. The tow control module is something that I think it's about five or 600 bucks. It's a pretty expensive part uh, and does require coating in addition to all of that. Now. The one benefit you do get with a tow control module is that it's gonna change your shift point as well as stability control engaging with that and engages trailer brakes as well. So that is going to be a significant benefit and if you're towing often, you probably are going to get the most out of the tow control module. But if you're looking to just get trailer brakes for cheap, there are aftermarket, I think they're usually like piggyback harnesses that exist that go onto the tail lights and you can make your own harness that, that plugs into your trailer from there. So that is an option that we may explore as well. Now you're gonna repeat the same process of how you removed everything with reinstallation. That should be a pretty simple process with installing the torques and your taillights, and then you are all set to tow your vehicle. And once again, thank you so much to Wolf Auto Parts for working with us on this project. Uh, we have other stuff from them that we're gonna be doing in the future. Make sure you check out their site if you are looking for used parts. They do a good job of taking pictures and listing their stuff on their site. They do list by Volkswagen Audi part numbers, so that's also very helpful for anybody who's looking for specific part numbers. You can just transfer them to their site, see if they have them available. Uh, they are a good offset for someone like us where if something doesn't make sense to buy new because of how expensive it is like this or if it is discontinued, uh, they are a good option. So thank you so much to them and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.